with us, and Alex should be with us. In fact, I think he's here with us now. Yes, Hello, I am. Alex. Can you, can Hi, Alex. Me? I can. Great day for you to be with us, buddy. Yeah, What's thanks for having me back. Sorry, I have like people doing construction on the street below me, so let me close my window here. Okay, buddy. So, so yeah, focus, I'm a little familiar. What are you focused on here? Uh, you know, I, I was just saying going into this uh, sell-off in the S&Ps that uh, there are an awful lot of people, Alex, looking for an October massacre and a washout under that August 22nd low that maybe the market catches people flat-footed and we don't take out that low and grab some have some type of yeah absolutely I think I think take out uh, you know prior to the August move uh, we were expecting a, a down move I actually wasn't expecting it to be as quick and dirty as it was right. uh, I think we've relieved a lot of the mean reversion uh, inside the market and I personally even though I'm a long-term sort of bear on the stock market flat to down through 2018 I think it's at least due for a pause if not maybe a slight rally into the end of the year uh, buying in October and holding into Christmas time is you know one of the better seasonal trades uh, of the stock market so you know, my personally, you know, the stuff I'm looking at is uh, high quality oil names and trying to somewhat bottom pick things that I think are overdone. Yeah, uh, it, it, actually, it's interesting that you bring up oil, Alex, because um, I'm looking at this one hour and four hour chart, and since we had that huge advance of about 15% in three trading days, all we've been doing is moving sideways, consolidating. And actually, the crude oil, I think if it holds this 43, 44 level, looks like, like it's on the verge for a recovery up towards 52. Right. You can see in the last couple weeks, we've started to compress here and pinch right. out into either a flag or a, right. a triangle, whatever you guys want to call it. We call them compressions. And I'm sitting here with my, tri my finger on the trigger waiting to go. Uh, either way, I'm fine with. Uh, I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, actively trying to play the next breakout here. Uh, on the larger scale with crude, we've been getting a lot of these monthly extension bottoms, and it's very rare, uh, at least in my research, to see more than one on a monthly scale. So we've just completed, I think, the third one. Uh, so personally, I think oil has found a bottom it could dip down to 40 maybe 38 but uh, okay. you know we're looking to play from the to the upside yeah I, I mean you know on a day like this and some dollar strength I, I do believe that uh, it's showing some resilience in here um, I'm interested what kind of harmonic pattern was it that you had up there on crude crude we don't really have a high quality pattern here Okay. Uh, we actually don't even have uh, any parallax compressions either, but uh, the longer-term stuff is definitely telling us we should try to play it from the to the long side. Um, more looking at high-quality stocks, you know, Chevron, Exxon, BP, uh, you know, some of the majors to to pull the whole sector out of the the basement, so to speak. Before you know, you know it's the interesting. Rest. I read a tweet and. Uh, I believe it was some post or article that you wrote, and uh, you know the fact that you're leaning towards uh, accumulating oil shares, and uh, I think you wrote a fairly positive article on the gold shares, and uh, they're both pretty contrarian calls because people now are so bearish commodities. Now it's popular the deflation and right. Uh, and you, you remember from, a couple of years ago when uh, soybeans were at all-time highs. <laughs> we were kind of the opposite stance, so it's kind of funny. We've we've uh, polarized yeah. our our view a lot of the time from the public. Yeah, but, and it, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting that both gold and oil are popping up on your radar screen when people have thrown in the towel, and there's so much negativity on commodities now. It may be yet they're reading yesterday's newspaper. And I think part of that is that we're we're pretty bearish the dollar index, so. Gold and oil are sort of the same kind of play, where we're 
in the in the longer medium term we're really trying to position ourselves in some ways to take advantage of a short dollar dollar index uh, so one what, of the, are you looking so with your view on commodity currencies could it be in the commodity currencies that they, maybe they I've the been down? trying to yeah I've been trying to actually just kind of zero in on some select currencies so we we know we have a bias for the dollar uh, being bearish, so now I'm trying to find actionable, uh, you know, trades that are setting up and breaking out right now. For example, like the, U.S. dollar yen down to one. Yeah, U.S. dollar yen. We've been seeing these uh, compressions start to pop up here on like the 360-minute scale, which is pretty much the institutional scale between daily and 240-minute. So mm -hmm. you've got a lot of uh, supply and demand equilibrium compression here, and we're looking, you know, to try to play this. We did ha kind of have a fake out to the upside, but since we have a bias to the downside, we're going to try to take this trade here a little bit. I was to thinking the if there's an S&P recovery, a kind of a risk on trade, that the yen might give us one more shot up to clean out all the bears above 121 and a half towards 22 and a half, 23. It's possible uh, on my screen. I don't. Know if, I don't know if you guys can see this, but in the equity futures, we've had. Uh, major bottom signals for the last 23 days. So we've been really trying to stay, you know, light on any shorts we have and try to pick some good spots to go long. Uh, even though the S&P has seen some weakness here in the last couple of days, you know, I think we're viewing this more as a buying opportunity than anything. Um, as you guys know, watching that whole Fed announcement, that was a pretty wacky price action so we kind of got whipsawed a little bit in there and we usually try to be patient uh, after events like that to add more positions um, just because we think there's a lot of confusion here and uh, sort of waiting for this retest of a low that was a pretty major low area extension wise Okay, so you think we we retest that 1820 level, maybe even take it out? Uh, I don't think we take it out, but uh, the classic double bottom is starting to be very clearly evident at this point, I, right? I saw I saw a wave count that this is a four, this bounce that we had from August 22nd, and that we're going to clean out the 1820 level, go to 1800 or so to complete four. And I think it was a weekly count. And right, then we get a two to uh, six month rally that either fails to make new highs, truncates, or goes to twenty two hundred or something like that. Yeah, it could be. So you know, we're just trying to stay nimble here. To be honest, there's times in the year when I don't see a lot of trades, and this is one of the you know times where I don't have a lot of really good ideas. I have a couple few focus ideas, but I just don't see a tremendously large amount of high quality setups personally. So okay. you know, there's certain times when you have to kind of force yourself to sit on your hands and I think that's you know really what we've been sort of touting off in our in our stuff here. Um, so I'm interested, uh, okay you went to the Euro because I wanted to the talk Euro, you, on the dollar. We, we have a major monthly bottom here in the Euro so Again, you know, it's compressing at uh, probably the daily scale. So we're, we've been kind of looking at this trade. Um, another trade that I think is is definitely been uh, highlighted on our radar is this weekly compression in the British pound. Um, you know, these these signals for us are very very high quality, meaning that the moves that come out of them are going to be large and in charge. So we're really trying to watch price action closely and make sure that we can, uh, you know, put on some sizable positions before these make, you know, big extension moves. Okay, and do you have a big picture on the dollar index? Does it look like the top was the day after the Fed uh, when we peaked? Uh, and we're right there at this 97 level. I thought we might have a shot for uh, one more push up, but yeah, I was thinking that. Our harmonic stuff is showing we have some to the upside to complete this pattern. I don't really like to draw patterns that aren't complete, but, but again, very oh, neutral on. here in this daily. 
in the daily time frame, but in the larger term <laughs> stuff, we're looking to we're looking to go short. Uh, come on, you can give us. It's okay. You're you're with me, Alex. You could give a uh, Nostra Bernal Nostra Bernal uh, uh, forecast, especially. I wish I wish I had more confidence to give you guys some really solid ideas, but I just I'm at that point where I'm. Everything seems to be well, stuck are. in the middle. You are, Alex. You know? you're, you're preparing us for yeah. things that then we can begin right. to, uh, you know, look at what your biases are, and then wait for our charts right. to start uh, confirming what you're talking about through your telescope with our microscopes. So you are actually helping us. Just because there's nothing today right. doesn't mean that your work doesn't have a lot of value for. Uh, going forward into, uh, you know, what you're talking about here. So, I mean, yeah, you've given I think me it's an important. idea yeah, it's important for people you actually to realize confirm that what too. I think the dollar could do before the right. next I mean, I think it's important for people to realize that too. It's like when you are looking at your charts and you're looking at your style of trading and your type of setups or indicators to understand when there's moments where they they just don't really give you a tremendous amount of edge where the markets are kind of you know hovering around their means or middles there's not a lot of mean reversion going on or you know the the momentum is very low like these are times to not risk a lot of capital you know we we don't have the probabilities on our side we you know the the deck has just been reshuffled so to speak in blackjack so we're just kind of sitting here and we're waiting for our setups so uh, uh, going to uh, the gold uh, with the potential of that move in the in the dollar up there, Alex, do we have a shot for to clean out everyone who thinks that we have a gold bottom here? And yeah, trade I mean, under gold that? has just been doing that over and over and over <clears> again, right? I mean, it, we yeah. thought we had bottoms back here, they stopped them out, and we flushed them out again. You know, I wrote, the article I wrote a few. Uh, uh, months ago, I think it was a couple weeks ago, showed the macro stuff on the COT report being very bullish. Right. That itself, again, doesn't really trigger a just immediate buying panic, but it does lay the bricks for a solid foundation. Uh, you know, and it, and it see, got a decent response. We had a nice rally from 10. Yeah, yeah, we 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 took that all the way up to you know about a 11.50, and then we we're you know kind That's of sitting here trade. with. With a little bit of position on, but you know, I want to see this thing start to have signs of larger-term bullish moves. And that uh, would be what over 1170. Yeah, I think I think really the 1200 mark for me is what I need to see, which is quite a bit away. But yeah, you know, I'd rather be safe than sorry. How about one more washout under the 1070 uh, low? It's definitely possible. It's definitely possible. With the uh, dollar going to above parity. Right, right. So, again, so, you, know, you know. To me, to me, the theme is uh, if we get one more uh, bout of dollar strength going into October, November, whenever it is, that we're setting up great buying opportunities in commodities and in euro and especially in cable. Right, so I mean, with the with this pattern that could possibly pop up, pretty high-ranking butterfly, you know, a flush below the the lows down to you know 1050 would actually be a nice little setup here if it were I'm to actually. I'm buying junior come gold miners on that, Alex. I'm <laughs> buying junior gold miners on that because you know they're starting to act pretty good, um, especially uh, they're even beginning to outperform the majors. And what I'd like to see is. Uh, a washout in gold and some of these gold shares not making in those. That would be a great sign. Absolutely. Positive divergence there for sure. Okay. Well, uh, Alex, what's about, was there anything else you wanted to cover? or maybe That's it for me. It's really actually kind of a short and sweet for uh, summary for me this week. Uh, stay nimble. Okay. Look for setups. Don't get too committed. That's That's kind of my advice right now. Okay, and I noticed on Twitter at times you do webinars, so I'd like to use uh, the remaining time for people to. Yeah, feel free if you see I push. You. Yeah, follow me interest rate R. Feel uh, feel free to uh, jump on any some any of these webinars I, I tweet out. I you know they're all for free and they're all basically just educational stuff for or for technical analysis. Uh, I am trying to get things together to launch some new 
technology next year probably going to have to be uh, probably going to be something related to harmonics. Um, most likely a scanning tool or some type of pattern ranking tool. Uh, so be on the lookout for that, and um, we'll talk to you in a couple weeks then. All right. Well, have a great fall trading season, Alex. And thank Thanks, you for Dale. sharing. And thank you very much for your time today and sharing your work with us. Absolutely. Talk to you guys soon. Bye bye. All right, buddy. My trading warrior brother, Alex Bernal. Everyone.